The problem is the you that wants to associate an awakening, an enlightenment, a, a, an experience to some sort of religion, some sort of ideological god, even science. If you think awakening and enlightenment is associated with any of these, any of life, any of the mind's games, any of the the broken down, segmented ways to differentiate between science, religion, man, woman, pain, pleasure. If you're trying to associate this like possible awakening enlightenment through a religious belief, then this may occur after a period of years and years and maybe bodies. See, the idea that the you that wants to awaken, the you that wants to associate it with a way, a path, a method, is the problem. Uh, there was a great um, quote by one of the most really, really, really switched on guys right now, Deepak Chopra, who's now transcending from this scientific, neurological, universal spiritual way into wow consciousness itself is exposed is exposable you don't have to do anything think about anything ask any questions about relations to science universe religion spirituality you have to just look at yourself deeply look at yourself uh, Deepak's quote something goes like something like this the life, the illusion of life that you want to see through, meaning, overcome, that illusion that all these saints and gurus speak about, the illusion of life that you want to overcome is challenging because you cannot accept that the you that wants to overcome it is part of the illusion. That means I have to go with the illusion. That's how simple it is. You don't have to associate with religion, science, spirituality, past, future, time, mind, states of mind. You look at yourself and question one question. Who is I? What is I? If you want to look at it scientifically, what is I? I, look at the shape of I. The axis, the maple, where all the ribbons swirl around. The spine, where the body works from. The axis, through the earth, where the earth spins around. The axis on every planet to spin around. The axis that goes through the universe to keep the universe spinning around itself. I, consciousness, is no different from consciousness. Consciousness has to be stable to exist. We all want to be fixed as, as the I. I want to be safe in the middle and stable. But I want to experience. Mm -hmm. I want to get out there and have fun. And it's possible to be both, you see. The fixed ones are those, the ones that want to follow routine, power, control, this is the way to do it. This is the path. This is the regimental way. This is the religious way. This is the scientific way. This is the mathematical way. This is the appropriate questions for that particular way. This is the Buddhist way. This is the Vedanta way. This is the Christianity way. This is the Catholic way. This is the Judah way. I is the way. Every one of these incredible, fantastical saints have given us ownership of the way. What a balance. Yeah, balance. Don't err for the side of good. Don't err for the side of bad. Two opposing states. Don't err for the side. Don't want, don't not want. Just be centered. Be 
the eye. Which eye is Buddha speaking about? Why would you question eye when you're already eye? When you're already this spine, this swirling body, this incredibly balanced and sometimes imbalanced body with a balanced but mostly an imbalanced mind. All we're doing is trying to create a balance for the mind. That's what awakening and enlightenment leads to. Then you can associate. Then you can associate with religion, spirituality. Then you can join some group, community. Then you, because you're pure, you're, you've seen through that fake illusion. And you've dropped that I that was part of the illusion. And like anything else, an onion develops so many skins. When you peel off one skin, the onion doesn't die because the onion's inside that skin. You're only peeling off your identity, your conditioned, your learned, programmed, systematic mind. That's all you're doing when you inquire within. And then you can look at science. Then you can look at consciousness. Then you can look at religion. And then you can, because you can see it through a, a pure, real, existing mind. The illusion has gone. Nothing has changed. An illusion does not necessarily mean we're going to take away that what is seen, smelt, touched, heard, and tasted, and we're going to give you some other things that you don't know about. You're not imbalanced anymore when you're enlightened. You simply accept everything because you know to seek happiness, you're going to seek up there. And Badness is going to go down there on the seesaw. I'm moving into consciousness. The problem is we want to stay as the eye in the stable, in the center. We are frightened to go out into the world of consciousness. This manic, beautiful, joyful world. So we, we cling on to the fear, to the aspect that if I go out there, I'm going to die. Yeah, I will die. The fear I will die. The mind, the mental state, that I am this person only, will die. That I see the world as good, will die. That I see the world as bad, will die. There is only the world and I. There is no differentiation between what is taking place in the inside and the outside. There is no afterlife and before life. There is no birth and death. There is no planned methodol methodological way. There is no chaos there is just a sense of being a sense of loving a sense of living and that's what everything leads to you can go through the associated way and join some religious cult or, or religious practice or, or whatever before you have to, to try and seek and gain and attain and you'll find comfort with that group and you will find love and then you will find. But you will never be free from the samsara eye, that prisoning eye. And no one is trying to change any human being to be some sort of special human being. We're all just trying to find the truth within ourselves. That's all this eye is. And when you look from that stable eye within consciousness that is part of consciousness, that cannot be separate from consciousness, is the core of consciousness, the root of consciousness. When you look from that place and you know that out there, there could be something more, even when this body goes. So the Tower of I is never separate from me. But I is consciousness, the I that dwells within the consciousness that I is, that I created, that I am cannot not be. I can move into anything, any planet, any star, any galaxy, because I is free. I is free from that me, that person, that associated thing that attaches to specific things in the world. There is no attachment. There is no detachment. There is just life as it is.